Hello there. These are some of the features of a 2005 Mercedes ML500. This one lives in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. I bought this vehicle last year for a grand total of $500. I've probably put about $10,000 into this truck now through insurance, parts, and what else? That's about it. Free labor because I fixed it myself. Anyway, here's some of the features of this truck. It, of course, has outside temperature, which you can see is hot. It has the mileage and the time and the gear you're in right now. We're in park. If you change gears, that little symbol will change to show what gear you're in. There's reverse. There's neutral. Drive. And this little knob here you can use to change the mileage to a trip meter and Optionally, you can press it twice, and you can see when your next service is due. Service B, I think that is. The truck has a cruise control. To engage it, you push it up. Disengage, you push it back. Resume, you hold it down. And then to excel, you push it up. One mile per hour acceleration to decel, you push it down. That's one mile per hour. Here's the uh, headlight switch here have an auto, lights are going off automatically. Turns on the uh, headlights, there's your parking light. Turn lights off down there, makes them all off. This vehicle also has low range, so there is a low range setting which will uh, change the, uh, not the differential, it's like a um, transmission box down there that it will put into a low range. There is a motor that will remove the, an arm that will change the gearing. The truck has also fog lights. To use the fog lights, you will turn the lights on like that. You can turn on the fog light like this. You'll see a green illumination for the fog light. There's two fog lights in front. If you push the button once, you get the front fog lights. If you push it again, you'll get the back fog lights, and this will be illuminated. And you'll see a green fog light in the uh, dash there. The AC on this thing works quite well. Turn off the AC, you turn this control to zero. The AC is now off. Turn the AC on, you can press the auto button. And, and set the temperature, the vehicle will automatically be kept at the temperature that you set the uh, control at, thermostat at. You change the fan setting here. I always go to recirculate mode, which keeps out the outside air. There is a rear air conditioning for the rear passengers. You can keep that off for more air to yourself in the front, or you can turn it on, in which case there's less air. When it's really hot out, you want to simply go to the cold setting, hit auto. That'll bring up the fans and the cold air. You can also travel about with the AC turned off. That turns off the compressor. And if it's cold out, you can go to a defrost mode here, which will turn on the defrosters. You can also turn this on to defrost the back window. Of course, with it being uh, 93 degrees, we don't need defrosting. Here's how you op operate the windows. These are the uh, front windows, back windows, front and back. This is a child lockout switch for the back windows. The mirrors will fold against the vehicle, so if you activate these, the mirrors will fold. You can press this button and then locate the mirror by selecting the direction of where the mirror is supposed to go. The truck has an ESP um, 
which means when you're driving and it senses slippage, um, the truck will uh, mitigate the slippage. There's a yaw sensor in here, and it'll also look at what the wheels are doing. And it looks at where the uh, steering wheel is. If your steering wheel is, say, 20 degrees, 30 degrees center, it knows you want to turn. And if you're going straight, it knows you're not turning. So for ESP to work right, it's important that your steering wheel is level when you're going straight. There's a uh, little BCD, BCD encoder in here that will encode to the ESP box um, what your angle of steering is. And that's essential to this work right. You can turn the ESP off. When the ESP is working, this triangle will flash. And that usually means your ABS is firing off and the truck is trying to correct your steering and to the direction of what the steering wheel is, is pointed. There's a rear wiper with washer here and these are for the side windows. There's two little side windows back there. You can open up with these. This is for the seat heat, for the driver's side, and for the passenger side. The truck has a uh, standard stock Alpine type Mercedes radio. This radio sounds pretty good. Turn it on like this. Yeah, that really you think should be um, in your life. Maybe you want it in your Optionally, it had, say, a satellite receiver. This one doesn't have one. That would go in the back of the car. Also, a mobile telephone, which this doesn't have one either. Not that I want it. Um, you can open the radio to play CDs and I think DVDs too. I've never tried the. Uh, DVD in this thing. Right now I have a generic navigation CD in here which I burned off of an ISO image from when I got on eBay and it is a burned CD. It's not a Mercedes stock CD so it doesn't seem to work very well. I may need to also clean up the uh, DVD player in here. You can also play cassettes in here. Not that I've ever played one but to close it you punch that button ahead and it closes. So to use the um, navigation, you hit nav menu here, and it'll say, please insert CD-ROM. I did that. This thing is sort of cantankerous. Let's see if it's working at all. This hasn't worked ever very well. Put it back in. Close it up. I'm tempted to pull this thing apart someday and try and figure out what's wrong with this thing or put a new DVD for it. This thing does work once in a while and it seems to work when it's cold out. Okay, well, it also has a voice, I think, for the navigation. I can't show you nav because it's not working. Go back to radio. And this thing will scan for stations. You can also adjust the, uh, the audio on it. What else can we do here? List out the stations that are around it so it does a scan. That's what I have mapped in the buttons there. So button one, two, three. It's kind of cool. So it kind of matches the layout there. I'm not sure what auto does. I think that'll auto map stations. I don't really want to do that. Scan. I think it'll scan for stations too. I might lose all my settings. So standard FM mode, I think there are a few FM modes in this thing, let's see, there's AM. Basic radio, but it works good. And you can use this to navigate, it's pretty cool. So there's some basic AM type stuff, not much on AM around here. Oh, it has weather band too. So there's weather band. Right. In the lower 70s, northeast wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Your steady temperature in the lower 70s. The wind was southwest at 10 knots. See North winds around 5 miles. There's a couple of weather stations around here. And I know that if I don't see a DVD here, my nav isn't working. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't even see this. It doesn't even see the CD-ROM. So that's no fun. Tape. Ah, mag empty. I must have a CD mag somewhere in this thing. 
I think the mag is under the front seat. And I can't get to the front seat. It says mag empty changer. So there must be a changer in this thing under the front seat, but I can't even open the front seat to get to it. I don't have the key, so that's interesting. I never saw that before. Anyway, back to Nav. What's Nav doing here? We're in Nav and nothing's happening. So anyway, yeah, this radio, I mean, maybe I could take it out and replace it with something else. This car has so many miles on it, and the radio works fairly well, the sound. I'm not sure I really want to mess with it, plus the car is kind of rusty. What else do we have in here? Here's the uh, lights. This is pretty cool. So it's got a home link for your garage door. It seems like everything has a home link, right? It's got lights that will work. You have to enable them, I think, with this button here. This one enables the lighting. So if I, right now my lighting's all turned off. Turn on the lighting. And then I can activate these. And that will also activate all the lights when I uh, open the doors. There's also lighting under the mirrors, which is really great. So if you're a reader, you're bored at night, you want to read a book, you can use these mirror lights. This button here will dim the mirror out for headlights. Uh, what else? It's got a um, compass in it, which is kind of cool. You have to calibrate that by driving in circles. And looks like a trip meter that I was using. Turn that off. Oh, can't reset that. Miles per gallon. The MPG in this thing, that's that's probably about right. I haven't reset this thing in a while, but I do manual calculations. That's probably about what it gets, so that's pretty accurate, which surprises me. And that might be a trip meter or my distance to empty. Let's see, can I reset it? Okay, so I'm going to guess that's DTE. And the tank has that many gallons or gas left in it. I've gone so far 181. I know I can go about 340 miles before it's done. So 181, 291. Uh, I don't think it's going to go 200 more miles. Let's see. 181, 281, 381. It, it might go 200 more miles, but it's going to be a stretch. I've already gone 181 in this tank of gas. Okay, what else do we have here? We have the sunroof here. So, this button will tilt the sunroof. There, it's open a bit and tilted. Closes it like that. You can push it back by pulling back on the button. It opens up the sunroof. And there's a little wind deflector here. And of course, this will close it. Anyway, I don't use this sunroof a whole lot. I just don't want it getting jammed on me. Keep that closed. It has cup holders, which need to be cleaned out. Two cup holders. There is a pretty generous glove box in this thing too. Of course, it's full of junk. Nothing surprising about the glove box. And it has an ashtray here. This thing was jammed when I got the car. It had a cigarette lighter in it, which has never been used, thank goodness. So I charge my cell phone with a cigarette lighter. It works pretty well. And the fuse for this cigarette lighter, if it's blown up, the kids were putting pennies into it and screwing it up, there's a, uh, a fuse box right under this panel. You take those two screws out, and that's where the cigarette lighter fuse is. And it's also got 12 volts there. That's kind of cool. I never noticed that. So what can I do with that? I can, uh, I can move this thing over. I never noticed that. I read about it, but never found it. Okay. Put this into here. It lights up. Yay. And now we can put this back into here. I had a hard time getting this thing out of here. Put that back into there very gently like that. Close this thing up. And will it stay closed? I don't know. No, it doesn't. 
and I'm not sure how to get this thing out of here either to fix it. There is a little cubby hole thing here which you can put junk in. But there's some parts I need to fix the truck for the emergency brake. This is called a sprag and it's essential for the back emergency brake to work. The brake cable will pull against this guy and then it makes this um, this device pull out and the uh, make the prads expand. So right here, that little part there will pull up and down according to this little lever here. Aha! What is this? This is a mass dot transponder. Look at that. And a couple of batteries in here. Odds and ends. There's also a top cubby where I keep a uh, an earpiece for my cell phone, a Bluetooth device, which I got to charge. There's also some iPad, iPods here, not iPods. What are these called? Apple headphones, whatever they're called. And then you can activate this button here to open up the uh, bottom cubby. Well, that's a mess, isn't it? Let's take this out, get rid of that thing, not much really in here. I did try putting in some LED fog lights in this truck and these were pretty pretty useless. i to throw those out, give them away, and I'm a fan of these um, surgeon type lights that they have at Harbor Freight Tools, these are fantastic for uh, working on the truck. It's got a high mode, it's got a low mode, it's got a blinky mode. Anyway, this is great for when you're trying to see something and you're working under the truck or on the engine or something. Essential for the person with no garage. All right, well, that was my little tour of the truck. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, of course, you can lock the doors here too with the uh, lock. Pressing that down will uh, lock and unlock all the doors. And that's about it. Pretty simple truck. I had my uh, right little keeper thing there fall down. You can see where it's broken off from the car. I had some heavy stuff in it, I broke it, unfortunately. Also, on the side of the car here by the windshield, that tends to come loose, I guess, in these cars in the sun. This truck has had two windshields since I've had it. This is number two windshield from uh, Rocks breaking it. Yes, yes, I still have the R sticker on this thing. Hopefully I can get rid of that thing soon and get a real inspection sticker on there. Yeah, and anyway, thanks for watching and time to go back into work. Have a great day.